opportunity to review the situation in Lebanon, and we remain committed to the agreement that you concluded with Israel here, which bears directly on the long-term security of Lebanon and the, the Middle East. And I think it's also important that we outflank the opposition. I, we realize the need to consolidate control in the areas that are not under foreign occupation, and do more to rebuild the infrastructure in the Israeli area in the south. And as perhaps you've already been told, I don't know in the meetings taking place here in our talks with Israel, that they would, in that area in the south, where they uh, still are occupied, they are still are occupying, uh, they express their desire to see Lebanese come in and create an infrastructure for uh, their own control of the area, and they would, in such an event, uh, withdraw and to return to their own borders, which certainly would be some progress. But uh, we would like to hear your own views on the <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Don't do that when you're trying. You're not David. David now? Well, it's been my great pleasure to once again welcome our friend, President Jamail, to Washington. President Jamail symbolizes Lebanon's hopes for unity, peace, and stability, goals for which all of us are working so hard and for which many Americans and many more Lebanese have sacrificed their lives. We admire President Jamail's personal courage. We applaud his determination to free his country of all foreign forces and to reunite the Lebanese people. Lebanon once shined as a 
like a jewel in the sun, and America will do what it can to support Lebanon's efforts to restore her tranquility and independence. To this end, we stand by the May 17th agreement as the best and most viable basis for the withdrawal of Israeli forces from Lebanon. And once again, I appeal to the other external forces to leave Lebanon. I was particularly impressed by the initiative that President Jamal took in calling for national dialogue. Today, he and I have discussed his programs for national unity. And Mr. President, your efforts to broaden the base of your government, bringing in Lebanon's many communities, will do much to rebuild a stable and prosperous Lebanon. It will do much to restore confidence in the future. It will do much to stop the loss of so many innocent lives. President Jamal has already achieved a measure of success through the effective leadership that he demonstrated during the first round of reconciliation talks in Geneva. Yet there is still a long way to go, and Lebanon can count on our help. Our Marines, along with our allies and the multinational force, are in Beirut to demonstrate the strength of our commitment to peace in the Middle East. And I know you agree with me, Mr. President, that the American people can be proud of the job that our Marines are doing. Their presence is making it possible for reason to triumph over the forces of violence, hatred, and intimidation. My special representative for the Middle East, Don Rumsfeld, returned recently from his first round of meetings in the region. He'll be returning to the area soon, and will be working directly with President Jamal to arrange foreign troop withdrawals and to pursue Lebanese national reconciliation. We we're delighted to have you with us today, Mr. President, and we wish you Godspeed on your return home. Thank you. Mr. President, I want to thank you and the American people to whom we in Lebanon owe so much. This is my third visit to Washington, and probably the most important because of the intensity of the crisis in Lebanon and the region. Yet, I am confident that actions properly conceived and executed at this time can result in dramatic movement towards stability, security, and peace. Today, we explored as partners, the best ways and means not to merely implement agreement, but going beyond the letter of the law to set up the most appropriate mechanism and conditions for the achievement of our common interest and policy objectives. We found ourselves in full agreement on the necessity of withdrawal of all external forces from Lebanon and the full restoration of the Lebanese sovereignty and exclusive authority over all of Lebanon's territory within its internationally recognized borders. This and this alone will put an end to the continued tragedy which is now engulfing not only Lebanese, but Americans and Lebanon as well. Hence, it is imperative for us all to break the cycle of violence which has been preventing the people of Lebanon for the past decade from exercising their divine and natural right of self-determination and the shaping of a free modern society in full social and economic partnership. I found in Washington full comprehension of the fact that leading Lebanon out of the present impasse is not only a question of justice and right, but also a matter of common interest, both for its neighbors and the U.S. In view I view our discussions today with a sense of pride and accomplishment, and I'm gratified 
by President Reagan's commitment and the support of the American people. I look forward with hope that actions taken as a result of our discussions fortified by the courage and vision of the American and Lebanese people will result in peace in Lebanon and the entire region. Present Ho How are you gonna get the Shut up. 